Welcome to this week's video tutorial. Today I would like to introduce to you our new single map HTML5 template. The HTML5 reports work without any plugins and can therefore be used on Apple computers and mobile devices such as the iPad. Also, the reports are faster than their Flash equivalent and because HTML5 is an open standard, it is now much easier to integrate the HTML5 dynamic reports into your own website. If you are already licensed for the single map flash template, you will automatically be able to use the HTML edition of the single map template as well. What you can see on the screen in front of you is an example report created with the HTML5 single map template. The default look and feel is slightly different to what you may be used from the flash reports. However, you can style and design the report in an even more flexible way than it is possible within flash. There are some differences between the HTML5 reports and the Flash reports which I would like to highlight. Most importantly, the HTML5 reports are made to be touchscreen friendly. For this reason, there is no context menu, or some people call it right mouse click menu. The functions such as filtering to a certain selection or clearing the current selection can now be found either in the map toolbar or in the footer of the data table. So for example, if I select a few areas, you will see that both buttons become available. If I select Filter, the report filters the map and the data to only include the selected features. Also, the Filter button now has a red cross which allows me to clear the filter again. The Data Table footer also shows the Notes icon for the last selected area. This can be used to link to external resources. If no link has been set up, then no notes icon will appear for that area. You will also find that the Data Explorer works differently. You will not see the whole tree of the data structure, but you can drill down from one level to the next. The top level shows all available base geographies. If a report only has one base layer, the Data Explorer will show all available themes. From here you can now drill down to see the indicators of a certain theme. And if an indicator has several time periods, you can see these when you click on the indicator. Clicking on a time period or on an indicator without any time periods will load the data into the report. When you select a categoric indicator, the bar chart shows one bar for each category. And the height of the bar represents the number of map features which fall into this category. Another enhancement is that you can now use Google Maps without needing an API key. And besides the common layers, street map, terrain, and satellite with labels and without labels, the report also offers a grayscale view of the street map. As you can see in this example, the component titles can be dynamic. So for example, they can show the currently selected theme, indicator, and time period. You can configure the table column headers in the same way. There is a new component called Menu Bar, which is useful for functions which are less frequently used. In this example, it contains Help, Print and Share links. The Print link opens the report in a new window or tab. And it resizes the report to fit an A4 sheet of paper. If you wish to change this size, you can do so by using the plus and minus symbols. If you're happy with the size of the report, you can click on the printer icon to print the report. Back in the main report window, I would like to show you how easy it is to share this report with someone else. Clicking the share link shows me two links. One allows me to send a link to this report in an email. The other one gives me the HTML code to embed this report into my own website without needing to have the report files on my web server. Simply copy and paste this code into the source code of your web page. Adjust the width and height settings if you wish, and this is all you have to do to embed the report. You can also export the map and charts as an image. To do this, you can click the export icon which appears in the right hand corner of the component when you hover over it. A new browser tab opens which shows the map or the chart as an image. You can now save it through the context menu of your browser. 
If you click the export button of the data table, you will not get an image. Instead, you can see the data as a comma separated list, which can be copied and pasted into a CSV file or directly into Excel. If you have a subset selected and you click the export button, only the selected areas will appear in the export. The data in the report is served in JSON format. The file is called data.js and replaces the data XML file which you may know from flash reports. The new Excel Data Manager add-in, which is part of the 660 Instant Atlas release, allows you to export your data either to XML or to JSON depending on the type of the report you are creating. The final improvement of the HTML5 single map template I would like to show you in the Instant Atlas Publisher. If you have been working with Flash templates in the past, you know that styling and configuring map layers is not ideal since there are many settings of which some are needing to be set in the Publisher, some in the Designer or Style Editor. Some only affect the legend and others only affect the map. This has become much more user-friendly. All layer settings, such as border width, border fill colors, opacity, if the layer is visible on startup or not, if the layer should show a tooltip or labels and so on, can now be set in the publisher properties of the layer. After the publishing process, you can change these settings by opening the map.js file in a text editor. This file is structured very intuitively, so you won't have any problems finding the setting to change. I hope you like the new Instant Atlas single map HTML5 template. If you have any questions on how it works, or if you would like to suggest improvements, please do not hesitate to write an email to support at geowise.co.uk.